Yeah. What's going on YouTube? This is Greg Ferris of Mayo Brain. And in this video, I want to do a recap of 2015 USAPL Raw Nationals. So it was just this past weekend for me. Today is just Tuesday. So I thought I'd be the best to get these thoughts out while they're semi-fresh in my mind from what happened. So before I kind of get into my own performance and whatnot, my expectations, um, just really, really excited to compete with all those individuals um, and to watch some other other individuals that I've seen, um, you know, on Instagram and stuff like that. It's very, very different when you see them in person. It's pretty cool to see those those kind of performances that are just, you know, kind of next level strength, you know, like Jesse Norris and Lane Norton and, uh, you know, Bryce Lewis, all of these people, uh, these huge totals and whatnot. Um, so that was really cool to, to watch some other competitors. I didn't get to see a ton of stuff. Of course, I was competing Friday. I uh, saw some of the stuff from the 74 kilos the day before me and some of the stuff, the 93. I think kind of the women uh, dibble dabble a little bit here. I think I saw Leanna Carr with a couple of deadlifts. Uh, Katie Ann Rutherford, I think her name is. Uh, I think I saw most of her lifts, her squat, her bench press. Really impressive uh, athlete there. But um, so yeah, that was really cool to watch everyone compete. Um, and also, it was really cool to meet a lot of people for the first time that I've corresponded with online. So I actually just met Harry, one of the Mile Brain coaches, in person for the first time. Harry and Frank from the Bodybuilding Bros, if you're familiar with their channel. It's cool to kind of hang out with them all weekend. Frank uh, competed. He also had two friends that were competing in the 83 kilo class as well, so that was cool. Um, Harry was kind of handling them and whatnot. Harry didn't compete this year. Then kind of meeting some of the other people, I, I met uh, Dawit, which is one of my clients from Maryland for the first time. One of my former clients, he was there competing. Uh, I met another former client there who was competing, so that was really cool to you know w interact with them. But you know, I kind of sat down and talked to them, and it was almost like there was no awkward, you know, that, that first kind of connection you have with someone where it's like getting to know them or whatever. All that was kind of out of the way. And it was almost like we were just talking like we would online, just face to face. That's really cool. And then kind of saw some of the big, the big names. Uh, uh, met Bryce Lewis for the first time. Of course, bonded with him a lot online, so that was really cool. Uh, Bryce, before my third deadlift, actually walked by me and kind of just shook me and said, "You got it, Greg." I was like, "Shit!" So um, that was really cool. Um, met Alberto Nunez there for the first time. I've of course bonded a ton with him. Uh, trying to think of some other really cool people. I met probably some other people. I kind of. Talked to Lane a little bit, but he was in the 93 kilo session when I got there. He was almost warming up and stuff, so don't want to mess with people too much. Uh, ben Escrow was cool to, to talk with him a little bit. Uh, so yeah, it was a ton of people. Charlie from Caffeine and Kilos was there. That was cool. Uh, their company is, is awesome. I really love what, what they do with their clothing and kind of with their whole mission and whatnot. So again, overall, I met a lot of really cool people there, and it was just awesome to be in that environment. It's hard to explain. So um Going out to my performances, I'll be pretty quick. There also is a video up already of, I think Harry's parents shot this one. Um, so it's the, the front kind of view in, in the crowd of all of my squats, I think one bench press and maybe two of my deadlifts, maybe all three of them, I'm not sure. Uh, but that's already up on YouTube. I think it just says Raw Nationals front view or whatever. I'm also going to upload the videos I got from the side, which was essentially just um, for me to see my speed between attempts to see kind of how I want to jump. So that will be up probably after this video. I'll probably just say the same thing, just side view. I think I have all nine of my. So now kind of going on to my actual performance, right? So familiar with powerlifting meets, the first thing that we do is a back squat. So again, we started at, uh, I was actually the, the third platform, first flight. So we weighed in at seven o'clock. I think I weighed in at 82.4 kilos. I wasn't really worried about it. Had Chipotle the night before, had Chipotle for breakfast, had some bagels, even before I weighed in. And I didn't really eat a ton before, um, or between weigh-ins and squats, because I already probably eaten like four or 500 calories. So I think I had a bagel, some peanut butter, some honey, uh, Gatorade, pre-workout, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, going into to squats felt really good. I felt fresh. Uh, the Monday before Nationals, all I did was hit like 385 for a single. So just, you know, feel really good. My knees are feeling good, hips are feeling good, mobility, whatever. I mean, when you fly there, my flight was like five hours um, in total. So again, 
it's always kind of a, a risky thing when you're having to be that sedentary the day before. Um, but I felt fine going in, uh, just normal kind of warm up and whatnot for, for squats and the, the, the bar was moving pretty, pretty well. Also, it was exciting for me to not squat on a bar that was whippy and that had weights that were almost to the end of the collars because we had more than 400 pounds. I trained at CrossFit gym and that's literally all we have. So uh, it was nice for me to train with something stiff where I didn't feel like if I took an off step that I was gonna literally fall over with weights. Um, so I just felt a little bit more in control and more centered and more balanced warming up than I had in a long, long time because again, my training equipment really isn't super conducive to powerlifting. And then I was first flight, I think I said that maybe already, uh, that was first flight. So uh, that means that I was looking at like 9.15 probably, right on the dot. I was towards the end of the squats because my squats really good. So um, we started at nine o'clock, but there were probably about 10, 15 people on my flight. So I went on like 10 or 15 minutes after we started. Uh, 4.35 for the first squat. I um, They messed up my rack height. So if you've ever done like an ER kind of thing or a powerlifting meet, you go in and say like the, the night before, the morning before, you go and say, okay, this feels good. I want my height to be at 14. So when you go up to the rack, of course, you have people that are 5'7 and 5'9 and 5'11 and different lengths and how you like it. So they actually adjust the rack from attempt to attempt based on what you put. So I had put 14 down and um, I looked, I walked up to the bar to open and I was like, oh crap, that looks kind of high. Um, but again, it's 435. I didn't want to like, you know, first, first lift of the meat and want to do anything weird. So I just hit it, but I barely cleared it out of the rack. Like I almost had to do a little like, shrug over the left side because I'm a little bit worried I wasn't going to clear it. So 435, again, it, it moved well if you saw it on, on the video, but I just didn't feel as, as super confident and super tight because of how I couldn't really get the bar really into me. I felt like it was low enough, but it was just kind of like on top of me as opposed to like really inside, like digging into my, my rear delt, which is what I like. So I went and actually changed Shout out to Harry, I didn't know I could do this, so I just changed my rack height. I just told them I want 14. Then my next attempt, they, they adjusted it for me, so that was a lifesaver. I don't think I would have hit the numbers I did without that adjustment. So 435 went well. Again, probably the meat went pretty quick. So I probably would have had five to eight minutes between attempts. I mean, it was, it was lifter, 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 and then second attempt, they were right on it. There was no kind of messing around with stuff, so. Uh, but I'm, I'm fine with that. It's about what I take in, in uh, training is about, I would say, four to five minutes, even for max effort lifts. So I feel like I can recover in that time. So I hit 463 on my second attempt, which was um, what I hit in my meet in April for a PR. And that was like kind of grindy, but not really that grindy. Um, and my goal going in, if you watched my previous video, was hit a 485 squat. So I took down my third attempt. And man, I was, I was like so fucking nervous walking up to that bar. I wouldn't make call it even nervous, just kind of like a um, euphoric, like this is what you've trained for, you know, six months for, is just kind of wait, um, you know, at a national meet, this is your third attempt, this would be a huge PR, 22 pound PR, um, and, and I smoked it. Uh, so certainly had a little bit more weight, but the goal was hit 485. I'm not done powerlifting, so it doesn't really, I mean, you don't really need to ever max out. Uh, you can just kind of PR your way um, the entire time. So 45 went really well. And the feeling I had after that lift of just like hitting it, the depth was good. You know, I, I, I hit that number. It's been in my head for, you know, at least the whole training cycle of what I thought I could do. Um, I just felt freaking amazing going into that. So um, then the kind of the, the gap between squat and bench was, again, pretty quick. We had two flights in between us. But again, probably about 10 lifters each, so maybe 45 to an hour. Um, I didn't really eat a ton of stuff between those two events, between squat and bench, some Gatorades and Skittles, maybe not even any whole food. Um, I don't think I had any whey protein either. So um, again, pretty quick turnaround between squat and bench press. And since my bench is so weak, I'm one of the first people to bench press on my flight as opposed to the squat, which is one of the last people to squat in my flight. So um, opened up at 260. That moved really, really well, no complaints. Again, it kind of helps too. I don't train on super great equipment, so the benches I usually have are really narrow, so I almost always feel like a shoulder is off. Um, and I've got really tight on that 260 bench press. Um, it felt really good because I was able to actually like 
pin my shoulders in to get my feet in and then grab the bar. And I just felt super good, super tight. So 260 went up, 275 went up a lot faster than it has in training. Um, and again, my goal was to hit 286. So that was gonna help me hit my uh, 300 or my 1300 total. Um, but since 275 moved so well, I was like, I have 292. Like I know I have 292 in national meet, like, like go for it. I was super confident. Even Harry was just kind of helping me out in my attempts. Thought I could hit it as well. Awkward pause. So I took 92, 92. Um, it moved really fast off my chest. Um, and if you watch the video, there's kind of like some movement. Can't see my other hand, my, my hand like this. And then of course I wasn't benching like this, but I was moving up like this. And then my left hand continued to go up, but my right arm kind of dipped down. It's pretty damn subtle. Dipped down, but I ended up kind of finishing and locking it out. Um, but they're being really strict with the, the rules and the calls and whatnot. I'm not really sure why that's even a rule, because going downward with the bar is not advantageous to getting it up. Um, but yeah, so I didn't hit 292, according to the, the judges or the officials. So it is not a meat PR. But I certainly would give myself that as a gym lift, which would be an all-time PR. You know, I hit, I hit 291 in the gym, but it's pretty freaking sloppy. My butt came off the, the uh, bench at 291. So to hit 292 um, at a national meet, you know, with a very, very small technical flaw in it, um, it's hard to be dissatisfied with that considering where my bench press has been. Um, you know, so, so yeah, I ended up with 275, but... Um, that's not a gym, that's not a meet PR, meet hit 281, and there, again, I should be confident enough now that 292 should not be a problem for me going forward with a little bit more work on my bench press, knowing that I was half an inch away from hitting it clean at a national meet. Um, so yeah, ended up with 275 on the bench press, and then going into the deadlift, about that same kind of break, it was pretty quick, 45 minutes, maybe a little bit longer between those two lifts. Um, and again, if you've been following me for a while, I've had some back stuff. I've tried not to talk about it because I don't want to be like, oh, I have back problems and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to do well at nationals. Um, so, you know, if you go to a competition, you know, you shouldn't be thinking about an injury or why you shouldn't be doing as best as you can. Like, to me, if you're going to do that, don't even go. Um, so for me, I wasn't really trying to think about it. But again, it was like I hadn't pulled anything super heavy in training or whatnot. So my confidence was a little bit lower with deadlift as opposed to the other two lifts. Um, but I also knew that since I didn't hit my bench press number, I was pretty much not going to hit the 1300 total. I needed a 540 deadlift, which was, you know, would be a 22 pound PR for me with really subpar training of the deadlift the last few months. So I wasn't thinking that was gonna, I would even attempt that. Um, my goal was to hit 530, to hit that 1300 total. So. Somewhere around there, I thought would still be possible into PR. So warm up for the deadlift. It felt pretty good. Couldn't complain. Uh, my back was a little bit tight from the squats. Again, just maxing on squats. You know, less than two hours probably before warming up for deadlifts. Um, but I didn't think it'd be too many, too uh, a big issue with just hitting singles with the deadlift. So to work my way up, I opened up with 460. So I think my my final attempt in the warm up room was 435, and it moved really well. Um, so went on the platform, hit 463, I think it was, moved pretty well, um, but again, just didn't have the confidence, I would say. That's the big thing with deadlift, is you have to be like super confident that you can, whatever's on the bar, you can pull it. And I've had that feeling before, but I just haven't had that feeling recently because of just, you know, some, some pains and whatnot, having to do deadlifts for two weeks and then stop and switch to sumo and then stop and go to conventional and all that. Um, just messes with your confidence a little bit. So I went 496 for my second attempt, and that moved like pretty well, but not as well as I wanted it to. And uh, I wanted to be a little conservative with the deadlift because I had missed that bench press. I wanted to get you know at least a PR total. I definitely want to miss my third deadlift. So I went the smallest jump that I could to hit a PR. So my previous meet PR is 518. I went 524. Um, I think it's 523.6 or 0.7, but 524. Um, and that was a pretty good grinder. It felt a lot harder than I think it looks. Um, it looks pretty hard too, but um, when I look at the speed, it's actually a good amount of speed like to my knee. 
Um, and to me, as long as the bar is like moving upward at my knee, I'm pretty confident as long as I'm not super rounded. I've been working on staying, um, I wouldn't say staying uh, vertical in my deadlift because I don't know if my builds ever going to allow that. But I've been working on staying in a neutral position. So even if I'm pretty horizontal, like you'll see me on my pull get pulled forward pretty much right off the ground. But my back isn't really like rounded. I'm just horizontal. It almost turns into a stiff leg deadlift, but not with a rounded back. So um, again, even if I get the bar to my knee-ish level and my upper back isn't super rounded, even if it's like moderately rounded, I'm pretty uh, confident that my, my glutes and my hamstrings are strong enough to finish the lift. So for me, it's really just about fighting that position to the knee, being in a good enough position at that knee to finish the lift. But if I get out of position there, I think I would miss it. Again, I haven't missed a deadlift in a super long time. Um, but that's how I feel like I would miss a conventional deadlift if I just didn't have enough speed or I got super out of position before the knee. But if I feel like if I'm even in a decent position at the knee, I can grind it out. So you'll see that there. Finish with a 524 on the deadlift. So 45 squat, 275 bench, uh, 524 um, deadlift for a 1284 total which is a 21-pound uh, 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 total PR for me. I totaled uh, 12.63 in April. Um, the bench press was not a PR, but yeah. The deadlift was a 6-pound PR, and the squat was a 22-pound PR from my previous competition. So, so that's it, guys. Thank you guys for following my prep journey. I'll probably have another video really quickly about what my future plans are. But again, this video is already kind of long. So thank you guys, as always. Again, if you didn't see my training footage, you can go back, I think there's actually a playlist called 2015 USAPL Raw Nationals or something like that. Um, you can go back and watch some of my training. I wasn't super consistent with it, but I was, you know, I have a couple of videos in there. I think I did some vlogging in there as well. So if you want to go watch that footage um, later, uh, you can always go do that. And again, I'll have those two videos up of my actual meet performance. So thank you guys for following as always. Um, also, if you're not, I recommend go checking out myobrainperformance.com. And subscribing to the newsletter. I'm going to do a little overview of my actual program that I did leading up to the meet, the 12-week program day by day, um, and also my volumes compared to in April and now kind of what I think I did right and wrong for the meet. So I think that'd be a very cool educational thing. Again, that'll be exclusively to my newsletter, so go check that out. Um, again, go to myobrainperformance.com. They'll say newsletter, sign up, get it straight to your inbox. So thanks guys. Have a good day.